Whatever you do, Lord, it's all right. Whatever you say, it's all right. Whatever you perform, it's all right with me. I'm fine with it. May not have been what I wanted. May not have been what I desire. May not have been my will. But it is thy will. And thy will will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. In Bethel as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. Mine be done away with. Yes, he So 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 good. So 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 good. He's real good. Real good. He's so good. So good. Say he's real, 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 real good. Real, 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 real good. So 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 good. So 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 good. He's real good. If he's been real good to you, come on, wave your hands in the presence of the Lord. He's been good to me. Hallelujah. He woke me up this morning. He didn't have to, you know. But he saw it fit. And we give him thanks and praise because he is exalted. The king is exalted on high. We came to exalt his name. I don't know about you, but I came to bless the Lord today. And I came to get a blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He is exalted. He is exalted. The King is exalted on high. I will praise. I will praise Him. He is exalted.
the king. The king is exalted on high. He's high. He's lifted up. He's exalted. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. Oh, yeah. He is exalted. The king is exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On Christ the solid rock Woo. I stand. No other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My hope is built Hallelujah. on nothing less Woo. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Hallelujah.
and through this storm. He is Lord. I said through this storm. said unto me let us go let us go into the house of the Lord so we welcome you this morning in the name of the Father Son and Holy Ghost those of you that are joining by way of live stream those of us here in the sanctuary. We are especially blessed today to have in service with us again our First Lady Sister Sharon Stewart and other members of the family. We are praying for you that with each passing day, God and His amazing grace will continue to strengthen undergird, keep, and restore you. We've come together as the ecclesia of God, a people called by God and given an invitation to worship him and to praise him. So we've come today to worship the true and the living God to acknowledge his greatness his love and his faithfulness toward us we've come to worship in spirit and in truth and in the very beauty of holiness you would have observed today that we are wearing our shirts depicting a picture of our late pastor if God has so choose to allow him to still be with us physically he would have celebrated his 65th birthday yesterday and so we come today in commemoration of his life of his service to ministry of his legacy thankful to Almighty God for his obedience in being a humble servant of God and executing all that God had assigned him to do. And so we know that his legacy will live on. And for this we continue to give God praise, honor, and glory. I would invite you at this time to turn with me in the book of Romans to the 11th chapter. And you'll find me down at the 33rd verse. 
We will read alternately. I will begin the first verse. Verse 33 on through 36. It says the following. Oh, the depths of the rich, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Oh, who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. Let us read this 36th verse together. For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. We invite our moderator, Minister Ishmael Leibon, who will come now with our opening hymn which will be followed by our invocation. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, and who hath been his counselor? That gives me joy. So come together, come let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. 10,000 thousands are their tongues, but all their joys are one. Let's celebrate, let's come and give honor and glory to God as we celebrate the life and legacy of our late pastor. After 39 years of laboring in this vineyard, God has chosen to call him to be with him. Isn't God good? Let's sing together and rejoice.
the whole creation join in one to bless the sacred name of him that sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. That ending part of the scripture we read this morning says, For of him and to him and through him are all things. To him be glory. The whole creation, that means us. We celebrate on this very special day and we pause to remember the life of someone who has spent 39 years among us, gifting all that he had and pouring out all that he had so that we could be the better for it. Aren't we the better for it? We give thanks to God for the life, the legacy, and the heritage of our late pastor, the Reverend Timothy Stewart. We give thanks today to our beloved First Lady, Sister Sharon and her family, those of us who are here and the others, and to you, Bethel. I know these are moments of bittersweet. There are sweet memories to enjoy, and we will celebrate. How do you celebrate in mournful time? But God has promised to make our ashes and into blossom as roses and to joyous experiences. So let's celebrate today and give God thanks for the life and the legacy of our pastor and all that he has birthed in us so that we can carry on in the tradition of this great house of God, Bethel, so that the name of God will continue to be honored, to be glorified. Let's sing together. The whole creation join in one to bless the sacred name of him that sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. Let's sing together. God shall praise the Lord. Praise Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Fathers, we assemble today, we've come to give you honor and glory. We've come to give you praise. Even as the psalmist has declared, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We declare that you've been great in our lives. 
that you've been faithful. And so today we have come to worship. And so as we lift our hands in praise and as we lift our voices and as the instruments play, we pray that it would be acceptable to you. That it would come up to you as a sweet smelling savor. And so God, accept the praise we bring the praise and sacrifices of thanksgiving, even as we call on your name, because there is none other that we can call on. No matter where we search, we can search all over, but we can't find nobody like you, Lord. There is just none like you. And so we thank you for this opportunity where we can congregate and engage in corporate worship and testify about your goodness to us. And so, Lord, we invite your presence in our midst. Moderate, Lord. Convene. Be present with us. We pray for the visitation of your Holy Spirit, that he would indeed abide with us. Even as we remember and celebrate the life and legacy of our late pastor, we say thank you for sending him to us. Thank you for the 39 odd years that he gave of himself, that he preached the word, that he did as you commanded him. And so we pray for the family his wife, his children, and those who were close to him, that the memories of joy and laughter, that the discussions and the debates and the time spent together would serve to provide strength to them, that they would look back and reminisce on those times fondly, and so we give you thanks for a, a life of service. And Lord, we pray today that you would indeed anoint your servant today. That will bring your word. We pray that there is a direct connection from heaven to him. We pray that indeed the words that you would have him to say that he would be your messenger today to transmit those words. Indeed, a reamer word for us, so that it would connect to each heart and each individual hearer. Speak to him, but most of all, speak through him, Lord. And we pray for the hearers, that we would be open and that we would be willing to receive your word today. May that word be understandable May it be translatable, may it be clear and concise, may it be precise so that it would reach and accomplish exactly what you have it to do as you promised. And so we thank you again for this opportunity to lift hands in praise and prayer. And we give you the honor and glory and praise for whatever will be accomplished today. And we do so in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let everybody say, come on, say amen again. Amen. Say amen like you really mean it. Amen. Many were the times that our pastor led us in this song, simply trusting every day. And he had a theme one year, trusting in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Let's sing this as we reflect and remember him today with joy and thanksgiving, simply trusting every day. Let's sing him.
him while life shall last, trusting him till earth be past, till I hear his final call, trusting Jesus. That is all, simply trusting every day. Let's sing together and give thanks. Trusting him today, let me shout, hear you shout amen. amen. Let me invite now our deaconess, Keisha Russell, to come and declare this occasion and also to welcome and recognize our visitors. Deaconess Keisha Russell. This is the day that the Lord has made and we have come to what? Rejoice and to be glad in it. Come on, wave your pom-poms if you got pom-poms. If you don't have a pom-pom, wave your hand. Come on. you. You glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? I know I glad. He woke me up this morning, clothed me in my right mind. I had food to eat, clothes on my body. That's just enough to thank God for. Amen? So we have come to another Sunday. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, it's good to be in worship with you this morning. Yes, amen. Some of, some of us we haven't seen for a little while. But we thank God that you have come to Beth El this morning, the house of God, and God lives here. Amen? Can't you feel his presence? Can't you feel his presence in the midst of us on today? And so we just welcome you. We ask if you are not a member of Bethel or you're joining us on this special occasion, that you would stand so that we can recognize you. Amen. We have... Okay, I see some members. All right, keep standing for us. Keep standing, sir. Thank you so much for joining us in this worship experience. I know that we have all the way from Remnant Tabernacle of Praise, our guest speaker, uh, Pastor Melvin Grant, and we have his lovely wife, Sister Donna Grant. Sister Donna, wave for us. And then we also have some members from Remnant on this side. Come on. Let's welcome them in service this morning. All right, Sister Musgrove, I believe it is, from our senior saints. Let's welcome her this morning. Yes. Amen, amen. We have the Nairns, I think I see y'all. Come on, wave for us. And my, and, oh, and this is the brother from Freeport. That's what Reverend Hutch said. That's you in the striped shirt? Come on, thank you for joining us all the way from our second city. Amen, amen. I just also want to recognize our lovely first lady, Sister Sharon Stewart. Wave for us, Sister Sharon. We love you. We appreciate you. And if you didn't know already, we are celebrating our pastor's birthday. He has been a good, good pastor. And I love my pastor. I don't know about you, but I love my pastor. And we celebrate. We celebrate the man of God that he was. And we will carry on his legacy. So I implore you. 
at as you are welcome this morning, that you would welcome the Holy Spirit in. You are welcome to dance. If the band kick off, I want to see y'all moving. I want, I want, okay, okay, Matt, okay. I want to see some smiles on your faces. Also, I want you to receive the word as the word comes forth. You are here. You will not leave the same because you are in the house of God. And so we welcome you in service today. If you're live streaming with us, we welcome you. And we are going to have an awesome celebration on today. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I think that you would agree with me that for all of us who know Sister Stewart and would have had her acquaintance would know that she's a quiet strength in support of our late pastor. She certainly was the wind beneath his wings. There's no question about that. And we are truly thankful. And I don't know that Sister Stewart herself realized the extent to which her presence and service with us today is therapeutic for a lot of us. Amen? Amen. Because when we see her, it's like we're seeing him. So we continue to give God thanks for you that he will continue to strengthen you and keep you. And so Bethel, at this time, we will have our own sister, Davina Ambrister, who will come and she will make a special presentation to our First Lady, Sister Sharon Stewart. Good morning, Bethel. Good morning, Bethel. That's better. When I was asked to make this presentation, at first I was hesitant. And then something clicked me in the back of my head and said, girl, get yourself. You notice your girl? And she wouldn't want it no other way. Bethel. As we continue the morn, the passing of our beloved pastor, today we pause to celebrate his first heavenly birthday. Yesterday would have made pastor 65. If Pastor Stuart was here physically during these celebrations, he would have handed all gifts, cards, and envelopes to Sister Stuart. So today, we honor his tradition and would like to present this small gift as a token of our love and appreciation, Sister Stuart. We know, as you, we know, you're an Arvid gardener, and we thought it would be only befitting to present you with your favorite flowers. As time passes, you will notice these flowers will grow like no other tree you have ever planted. It will be an indication that Pastor Stuart is always with you and the boys. Sister Stuart, we, the officers and members of this historic Baptist church, would like to say thank you for sharing him with us for all of these years. And we, we want to give you this as a small token again. We love you and we'll always be there. Thank you. Now, Bethel, we are going to have a tribute to our pastor by Reverend Wellington Johnson that will be presented to us by our own moderator, Minister Ishmael Lightburn. This is a tribute from the Reverend Wellington Johnson Sr. of Nashville, and as most of us would know, he was the immediate predecessor pastor to our own late beloved pastor, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Stewart. My tribute to our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Stewart, pastor of Bethel Baptist Church, by the Reverend Wellington A. Johnson Sr., former pastor of Bethel Baptist Church. Presiding officiant 
Reverend clergy, bereaved family, Sister Sharon Stewart, Timothy Michael, and Gardner Calvin, and the Bethel Baptist Church family. On behalf of my wife, Donna, and our children, Latonia and Wellington Anthony J., we want to express our condolences to our beloved First Lady, Sister Sharon Stewart, the sons Timothy, Michael, and Gardner Calvin, and our beloved Bethel Church family in the home going of Pastor Timothy Stewart. It was my heart's desire to be there in person to share in the homegoing of our beloved pastor, but medical advice prohibited that from happening. Pastor Stewart not only has been a conscientious shepherd, but has also been a generous friend. Over the past 39 years, Pastor Stewart has shown his kindness and liberality towards me as a former pastor. Every year that I was blessed to return home, Pastor Stewart generously allowed me to grace the pulpit of Bethel Baptist Church and declare a word from the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Stewart, for your unselfish spirit. Years before his selection as pastor of Bethel, and while a student of the American Baptist College in Nashville, Tennessee, I found Timothy Stewart to be a conscientious student of the word and a serious scholar in training. He excelled in every class he took under my tutelage. His dedication to God and his commitment to his call to the ministry prepared him to take the helm of the pastorate of the historic Bethel Baptist Church and eventually as the president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention Incorporated. Sister Sharon, you have been a vital part of Pastor Stewart's success as pastor and convention president. Your support enabled him to excel in both positions. May God's presence be a continued source of strength in the days ahead. You can look back with pride and the legacy to your husband has left. Thank you for being strong partner walking beside him. Permit me to paraphrase the words of the Apostle Paul in his second letter to Timothy and use those words in reference to Pastor Timothy Stewart. Those words are as follows. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that was in you, which dwelt in your mother, the Reverend Lavinia Stewart, and I am persuaded was in you also, you have stirred up the gift of God that was in you through the laying on of hands in your ordination. Timothy, you've been diligent to present yourself to God, a worker who did not need to be ashamed. You rightly divided the word of truth as you pastored Bethel. Timothy, you have preached the word faithfully. You were ready in season and out of season. You have convinced, rebuked, exhorted with all long suffering and teaching. Finally, Timothy, you have fought a good fight. You have finished the race. You have kept the faith. There is laid up for you a crown of righteousness which the righteous judge will give to you on that day. Sleep on, my brother. Sleep on and take your rest. May the work you have done speak for you. May the work you have done speak for you. When you are resting in your grave and there is nothing more to be said, may the work you have done, let it speak for you the Reverend Wellington Johnson. Let us prepare now for our offering. And as we do so, we're going to invite Deaconess Natasha Seymour, who will pray for the offering. And as she prepares to come and pray for the offering, I'll say this to us. Our pastor was also musically inclined. And I know that Sister Short is a senior musician in the family. 
but he also had rhythm and he had a pep in his step and he loved junk on the music yeah. and so after we would have had the prayer for the offering we will be led in our giving by the pulpit the ushers will direct the congregation and during this time we will continue to be ministered to in music by the songs of the Saxons. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let us pray. Eternal and all-wise God, we give thanks to you, Father, because you are so kind to us. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We ask you, Heavenly Father God, to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, all that we have come from you. Yes. So we give you back a portion of that which you have given unto us. Father, there is no one like you. There is no one that loves us so much to give his only begotten son as a sacrifice so that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. So, Father God, as we lift our offering unto you, we ask you, Lord God, by the blood of Jesus, to cleanse our offering. We ask you, Heavenly Father God, to receive our offering through your only begotten son, that it may be used for the furthering of your gospel here in the earth. Through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account, our main branch account, the account number 2895688, or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 157, account number 135-000-1435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account, a bank-to-bank -bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution, or over the counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over the counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button. That will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you.
Somebody. Ain't no harm in praising God. Anybody got a praise in the house? Oh, come on, y'all. Let's praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath. Let everything that hath breath. I tell you, this is celebration mode. There is a Holy Ghost party up in here. Anybody got a Holy Ghost move? Anybody got a Holy Ghost move? God been good to you. Yeah, come on, clap your hands, all ye people. We give God thanks and praise for this day of celebration and indeed for the Saxon superstars being here with us as we continue to celebrate 
and to commemorate the life, love, and legacy of our late pastor, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Stewart. I tell you, it's word time. Anybody excited about the word? I know there is a word in the house for us today, and indeed we are poised and postured to receive what thus says the Lord. And so on this special day, as we continue to celebrate and give God thanks for the life, love, and legacy of our pastor, this anointed pulpit here, who is about to mount this pulpit to declare the unadulterated word of God, is a fitting choice. Because after matriculating with a Bachelor of Science degree, with a minor in psychology with honors, magna cum laude, from the American Baptist Theological Seminary in Nashville, Tennessee, in December of 1989. He was ordained to the sacred ministry in September of 1990 by our late celebrant, our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Stewart, his childhood friend. Subsequently, he was not only ordained by our late pastor, but he served in a full-time capacity under his leadership for over two decades as office manager, marriage counselor, in administration, and pastoral care, just to name a few. This preacher of preachers, this called out anointed and appointed believer, believe me, comes well prepared. He is a scholar of the word, having proven himself scholastically while in seminary. His name was commonplace on the dean's list, semester after semester, resulting in him being named to the distinguished national dean's list for scholastic achievement in 1989. And listen in who's who in American Christian leadership in 1989 and 1990. And who's who among students in American universities and colleges in 1990. That deserves a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Our preacher has served on numerous boards and was a chaplain of the Honorable House of Assembly from 1992 to 2002. My brothers and sisters, help me with a hallelujah praise. Welcome to this sacred desk the pastor of the Remnant Tabernacle of Praise for seven good years, our vice moderator of the Bethel Baptist Association, Sister Donna's good, good husband, coconut in her tide like mine, Melissa, Megan, Mikhail, Dr. Nakisha, Aaron, and Natasha and their spouses, amazing dad, Mother Rosie Grant's good son, this preacher sits well appointed, well anointed, chosen, and called for a time such as this. This son of Bethel, this son of the soil, a true Bahamian, my brother, my friend, and your friend, none other than the Reverend Melvin Grant. Put your hands together as we hear ye him. Somebody say praise the Lord. God bless you. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Oh, my God. 
This morning, and I said to the <coughs> congregants this morning, and some of them are still here, I am just a messenger. And do not hold me responsible for what I say. I only open my mouth. And the rest is up to him. And I say to God, be the glory. That, that's, see, see, that's how I can sleep at night. That's how I can sleep at night because I, 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 I just do what he says. And, and that takes all the burden off me. Takes all the stress off me. And so I say to you again this morning, God, is continually with you. He's never left you. He will never leave you. He promised, and I know him to be a promise-keeping God. Do I have a witness? Yes. He keeps his word. He keeps his promises. We honor my childhood friend, Dr. Stewart, and all that he meant to all of us. Sharon and the boys and all of you, the members, we honor him for what he meant to all of us. Because indeed he touched each one of us 
in a very special and intimate way, as only Timothy Stewart can do. He had something about him that made you, no matter how sometimes you would disagree with him or were angry with him, he still had a way of making you love him. Yeah. That's John. Yeah. And we'll always remember that and honor that and cherish that until God also calls us home. And as I stand here right now, I just want to lift a few words from Genesis chapter 28. The story there is about Jacob again in his quest to get away from Esau, his brother, and uh, the in coming meeting with him again. As chapter 31 says, and Jacob saw from Laban's face that his attitude toward him was not the same. Then the Lord said to him, go back to the land of your fathers and to your family and I will be with you. And when the flocks were breeding, I saw a dream that a streak, that the streaked, spotted and speckled males were mating and with females. And in that dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob, and I said, here am I. And he said, look, look up and see all the males that are mating in the flocks and that are streaked, spotted and speckled. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel. May you poured out oil on the stone marker and made a solemn vow to me. Get up, leave this land, return to your native land. And in this narrative, as we continue, chapter 32, verse 9 says, Then Jacob said, God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, go back to your land, to your family, and I will cause you to prosper. Please rescue me from my brother Esau, for I am afraid, otherwise he may come and attack me with the mothers and children you have said, I will cause you to prosper, and I will make your offsprings like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. The story continues. Jacob was left alone, verse 24, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not defeat him, he struck Jacob's hip socket as they wrestled and dislocated his hip. Then he said to Jacob, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name, the man asked. Jacob replied, your name will no longer be Jacob, for he said, it shall be Israel because you have struggled with God and with man and prevailed. And then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he answered him, why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob then named the place Peniel, for I have seen the face, I have seen God face to face. And he, and he said, I have been delivered. And what I want to just talk about for a little while is Bethel, as you sit or lie in that lonely place, 
a place of loneliness and hardness, as you've lost Pastor Stuart. There is coming a time when you have to wrestle with your feelings on yourself. Not wrestle with men, but with yourself and with God. Father, bless your word as it goes forth. Heal, restore, as only you can. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you what's due your name. I want to just make special mention of my wife, Donna, and two of my faithful members from Remnant who again come to make sure I come back. <laughs> you notice they sent two ladies this day. The men were here this morning and now the ladies are here. And I don't know how many of you were around, but there, there are just a few of you here. God bless you, Pastor Neely, one of the sons of Bethel. Um, there was a lady that used to live right across the street there. And only the old folk like me know who, who that is I'm talking about. Old Sister Ingram. Mm. There's only a couple of people who know her. Yeah. Yeah. Flo, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Howard, you know. And the older ones know. Sister Ingram was one of those fiery people. That's putting it lightly. Mm -hmm. And she had a, a, a way about her. And she'd look at you. You know you don't mess with Sister Neely, Sister Ingram. I, I, I have a Sister Ingram down at Remnant sitting right there. <laughs> You're not all blue. Oh minor, oh minor, oh minor. She, she, she ain't nothing to play with. Amen? God has placed her in my path to remind me of his grace, his goodness, and his mercy. And I want to, to assure you, Bethel, that the God whom we serve never leaves us alone. You would recall in this story that, as we talked about this morning, Jacob saw this stairway leading up to heaven with God standing at the top. And after that vision, he comes now and he sees this man who picks a fight with him. And he wrestles with this man all night. Could you imagine wrestling with somebody all night? The scripture says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, and then we preachers always hasten to say, but how long is the night? How long is that night that you have to wrestle? Bethel, you are in that place now. May you're wrestling. You're struggling with yourself and you're struggling with God. Because you're struggling with yourself because you're asking, God, what am I to do? How am I going to make it through this 
this day. And then you're struggling with God because you're asking God why. Why did you allow your servant to simply live his life to preach your word? Why you allow him in the prime of his life and when he had just received everything that he wanted, everything that he had his heart set on, and, and then you call him home? Why? So you're struggling with those questions. Why have you allowed our pastor to leave? The pastor who was my friend, my brother, my husband. Why? Why, why, why my father is not here to help me and guide me as I walk this way? Why? Is he not here? Why am I alone? And every member asks that question and wrestles with God and go to God every day with that question on their mind. And they may not ask it outright. They may not say it right out. They may not verbalize it. But you're asking and you're struggling with that question in your mind. If you are a God of love, You're a God of mercy, Brother Miller. If you're a God who understands everything that I go through, why? And you're gonna rest with it. The question you you won't get an answer from God. I, I can assure you of that. That's one thing I can assure you of. God will not answer those kinds of questions. It's not that they're wrong, but God allows you to wrestle with the why until you come to the understanding of why the why was. He allows you to work through it yourself. He allows you to, to go through those moments. Of anxiety, those moments of testing when you are forced to walk by faith and not by sight. Because when you have everything going your way, when you have all your needs supply, all your resources that you have and you want are, are, are right at your disposal, you, you tend to get lax. You tend to take things for granted. You tend to take it for granted that every time I call, Stuart will answer. Huh? That even if he's away sometimes, he'll answer and if he have to, he hops on the next flight and he's here. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Yes. Do I know what I'm talking about? If I'm sick, he's here. If I hurt, he's here. And you take things for granted. And sometimes while you're taking those things for granted, you don't be appreciative as you ought to. Because you took it for granted. And sometimes, you know, I always admire Pastor Stewart's ability. You know, Pastor Stewart sometimes, he used to, um, at services, at funerals, when people were outrageously carrying on, the hall ran all over the place. Gas up all ran. Just flying all over the place. Pastor George would just sit there 
And he'd get up and say, you know, if you took care of them while they were here, you wouldn't have to go overboard. You wouldn't have to be so outrageous in your grief. Am I right? Sometimes when he did it, I wanted to go through the floor. <laughs> because right after that, there was a hush. <laughs> silent, silent, silence. That's because they didn't do what they ought to have done when they had the presence. And so you tend to overdo things after the fact. And therefore, as you wrestle, as you wrestle with the loss, the great loss that we all feel. As you wrestle and you ask God, and they tell you, God's not going to answer you. You must then, after you've wrestled with God, after you've gotten no answer from him, ask Jesus. You want no better example than that? Yeah. Jesus asks God, hey, What's going on here? Yeah. Must I drink this cup? Yeah. Hmm? My God, my God. And there's no record that God ever bothered to answer him. Jesus was there struggling, wrestling, just like Jacob with God. And God never answered him. And then he had to wrestle with himself and say to himself, why am I here? Why am I in this predicament? And then he remembered. I said, Father, prepare me a body. I'll go. I will do it. And so God just left him alone until he came to his own conclusion that, that this is something I volunteered for. Just as we now have to wrestle now with this, this death. This what some would say was untimely, some would say timely, whatever. You have to wrestle with it and God will let, let us wrestle with it until we come to the conclusion that not my will. It's not what I want. But thy will be done. The Lord giveth. And the Lord taketh. Until you get to the point where you get to blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, because sometimes when you're holding on and holding on to memories and holding on to people and holding on to things, you forget that there is a God standing there. And you feel like you're all alone and you feel like you're helpless, but there is a God standing there who knows all about your struggle, who knows all about your pain. He knows everything about you. He made you. For his glory and his honor. And all of us, all of us, no matter who we are, he uses us like a master chess player. And we, we not, I mean, some of us may act like kings and some of us may act like queens, but all of us are just pawns in God's hands. And you know, the pawn can only move one step at a time, he can only go once, 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 once. But the other side, the knight, and the bishop, and they can, they, can, they can jump a little more. But guess what? God in his economy ain't made none of us, whether we're pastors, whether we're bishops, whether we're pope, he ain't made none of us no more than a pawn to move one step at a time. Because if he elevate one of us to those other positions, we get a little haughty. We get a little pumped up. Huh? 
Am I right, Brother Moxie? Yes, sir. We get too big for our britches. You call people, and, and, and they can't answer the phone. They can't see you. You don't have an appointment, you can't see me. You can't just walk in and see the pastor. No. And what I loved about Pastor Stewart was he didn't care whether you had an appointment. He didn't care whether you were the bishop or the pope. You can just call him anytime and you can see him anytime. There are very few pastors like that around today. Everybody has gotten so breezed up. And they got to have somebody take their book, put it on the pulpit. What? They got to have somebody move it. They got to have somebody wipe their face. They got to have somebody standing down there. We had one fella here to preach one time at Bethel, and he was, had one fella here, one fella here, yeah. one fella there. Y'all remember? Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Lest he dash his foot against a stone. Everybody go entourage. God has made us all pawns so that we don't get breezed up. That's why he said, I made you a little lower than the angels. Could you imagine if he had made us just like the angels? Huh? And so you got to wrestle. And, 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 and instead of, of, of fighting, instead of jockeying for position, instead of pushing this one out the way and pulling that one in the way and, and all the running around and all the talks. And I, as I said this morning, I could talk about the talks because the talks all over the place. All over the place. And so you have to be careful. Because this is Bethel. This is the house of God. And we ought to be mindful of that at all times. Mindful of the history of Bethel. Mindful of where you came from. You came from that little building that was right here. Right here. Pulpit over there. Back door over there. Most of you don't know about that. You see, Chris here, we used to call him Bobby then. He and I and Owen used to be foot to foot behind Dr. Brown up and down in this place. Years ago. Too many years to remember. And then, out of this piece, with my father, Deacon Grant and Marriott, and all of those others. And the rest is history. And then my brother came and we did the front piece. So there's a lot of history here. And you cannot afford to let that history be dragged around. If only for the memory of Pastor Stewart and Brown and all of the others who went on before, Wellington, Johnson, and all of the other pastors who went on before, and the history of this place. You have to make sure that you do things decently and in order. Yeah. 
See, notice Jacob in this scripture. Jacob didn't wrestle with Esau, didn't wrestle with, with, with Laban, his uncle. Jacob wrestled only with God and himself. Whatever you do, Bethel, wrestle with God. Question if you want to. God is not afraid of your questions. God doesn't get upset. He doesn't think it robbery that you ask questions. You're a human being. Don't be afraid to ask him why. You can ask him why all you want. Don't be afraid to. You're not sinning if you ask him why. You're not doubting if you ask him why. You just simply want to know. Because we like to see things. And because he's God and he knows all things, he, he just let us work it out. Let us struggle. Let us wrestle. And then you have to wrestle with yourself. Understand who you are. Understand that you were made. And wonderfully wrought by the hands of a loving God who fashioned you for his honor and fashioned you for his glory. I know you think he fashioned you because you look so good and you smell so good and you act so good and you are so much in God's sight, but God fashioned you so when he looks at you and he holds you up to the devil, he can say to the devil, have you considered her? Have you considered him? They are mine. They're for my glory. They're for my honor. And so you have to walk in that integrity of what God has made you for. And see, when you walk in that integrity of what God has made you for, whatever position you find yourself in, You're satisfied. You don't consider it demeaning. You don't consider it subservient. You consider it where God wants you to be at this particular time. And you say again, Thy will be done. Because this is not about me. You're just an instrument. You're just a pawn in the hands of God. And God moves wherever he pleases. And whatever he pleases is well done. When you wrestle with yourself, you understand that God's in charge. You may say, how long should you wrestle? <laughs> He told them to, they stayed and they wrestled all night. I don't know how long your night is, Bethel. I don't know how long you got to wrestle. But I know you're not reached yet, the end of it. I know that. And you can see me. You ain't God, how you know that? <laughs> Let me tell you how I know. Because I, I see nobody limping. Everybody's still strutting. Yeah. Proud. Chest stick up. Pontificating, parading. Whatever you call it. Mm. Everybody's still upright. Mm. But when Jacob left from God, after that wrestling match, he had a broke hip. Are you broken, Bethel? And notice what it says. It says that God touched him in the hip socket. Has God touched you yet? 
Huh? Is there an area that God has broken you yet? Because your wrestling match will not end until God breaks you. God will have to break you and mold you and melt you into what he wants. Because when you are strong, when you are proud, when you are all that, God can't do nothing with you. He doesn't walk with the proud. He walks with the humble. He walks with those who are broken, who are hurt, who are crushed. God knows, C. Taylor says, God will not use a man until he has broken him and put him back together with his own loving hands. Until he has done that, he has broken you, Bethel. He has put you in a position where you feel helpless, when you feel vulnerable, when you feel like, like there's nothing else you can do. There's nothing else you can do but trust him. You can't see him. But you trust. You trust him. And you say, God, I don't know what you're doing. And trust me, sometimes you don't want to know what God doing. You don't want to know. I don't want to know all the details of God. Because my heart can't take it. Because even though he is God, and I know he can do whatever he want to do, when he starts to break, when he starts to hurt, when he starts to disturb, when he starts to unearth, when he starts to crush, the fear and the magnitude of that pain and that hurt floods your soul. And you say, I can't take it, Lord. But God said, if I don't show you, and I just carry you through it, That will make it easier for you to bear it. Because every time you get up from your crushing, every time you get up from your breaking, every time you get up from your hurt, every step you take, you will be able to say each step I take. I know that God, that you are with me. Because you know that every time you move from A to B, it is only God who provides the movement. It is only God who provides the strength. It is only God who provides the health. Because without him, you can do nothing. And until you get to that point, Your night can be long, Bethel. Your wrestling match can be long. You have to get to that point. And you have to do whatever it takes to get there. Get rid of all the besetting sins. Get rid of everything that stands in the way of God breaking you. Get rid of everything and get rid of yourself. Get rid of yourself. Dr. Wellington Johnson and I shared a joke when we were talking about a situation on how God can do what he wants and use whoever he wants. And I reminded Dr. Johnson that God can use a donkey Who you think ain't got no sense? (laughs) 
You, you think they got to be all this and all that? I've seen him use a donkey. Ask Balaam. The donkey had a word. And the word from the Lord. The donkey had spiritual eyesight. The donkey saw the angel. The prophet didn't see the angel, but the donkey did. Am I right about it? So the donkey had a word, a prophetic word, and the donkey had spiritual eyesight. When the prophet, who been to the school of prophets, who had his degree in theology, maybe had his PhD, Doctor of Divinity had no spiritual eyesight and had no word from the Lord. But a donkey did. Don't mess with God. He do whatever you want to do. They're all pawns in his hands. And he moves us wherever he wants to. However he wants to. The bottom line is this. This is the house of God. And you, Bethel, have to consult and wrestle with the God of Bethel. And let him direct you. Let him lead you. Don't you say... His arm is not short. Didn't you say that? The scripture said it, you repeated it. You believe it? Don't you say he knows just how much you can bear? The scripture said it, you repeat it, you believe it? Huh? Don't you say all good gifts comes from the Father above. The scripture said it. You believe it? Bethel, your faith is being tested. Your stickability with God is being tested. And it's not, uh, let me make this clear, it's not for God to know what or who you are, because God already knows. But what God is doing is for you to know who you are. Because like I said this morning, there are some things that come out when these situations happen. Some ambitions you never knew about. Some desires you never knew about or never thought about. Some opportunities you see that you can grab that you didn't think you could grab or think you could get. Some tricking, like Jacob, that you didn't know were in you. But this situation brought it out of you. The real you now is starting to rise. And the more and the longer the process gets, the more and the more of you is going to come to the fore. And you have got to wrestle with yourself and understand that that you that you see is ugly. It is ungodly. It is uncalled for. It is absolutely unnecessary. Because God will have his way. He will.
And even if you go against God and do what you want to do, God will still have his way because God will enable whatever you do to wake itself to its fruition. Ask Saul. God anointed him as say anointed him as captain. The people say, No, we want king. So God said, Okay, give him a king. Put his spirit on him. See, if you make a wrong decision, God ain't gonna just back off because that's what you want. He said, Okay, put his spirit on him. And after he started to mess up and mess up. Then God withdrew his spirit from him and say, I have chosen me a man. I find a man who can do the job. So God always wins. He always, he's supreme. He's supreme. So you got to be careful. You have to, like I say, you have to wrestle with God. And you have to wrestle with yourself. Mm. And the biggest battle you're going to have is not with God. No, it's with you. It's with you because you now our will. Our will always gets in the way. There's a song that we used to sing and, and, and most churches don't sing it no more called Sweet Will of God. You know that song, Flo? <laughs> Sweet will of God still draw me closer. Draw me closer. Till I am holy. Holy thy Sweet will of God. Still draw me closer. Till I am wholly lost in thy will. So that it ain't my will. It ain't what I want. My will must be crucified. It must be destroyed. It must die. In order for God's will to be implemented. And God's will to be done. Because at the end of the day. This is the house of God. This is Bethel. And God will have his way. You have to get to that point. Mm. Where you wrestle until your will is broken. Mm. Until your desire is broken. Until all you want is what God wants. Mm. And it does not matter what I want it. Mm. Then you get to the point where you say, it's all right. It's all right now. It's all right. Whatever you do, Lord, it's all right. Whatever you say, it's all right. Whatever you perform, it's all right with me. I'm fine with it. May not have been what I wanted. May not have been what I desire. May not have been my will. But it is thy will. And thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in Bethel as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. And mine be done away with. After Jacob had done that, after he had been broken and he was limping, but he was whole. Limping and wounded. But he was whole. Limping and broken. But he was strengthened because he now walked in the strength of God. He now stood up in the strength of God. He now walked and operated in the power and might of God. So much so that when he met Esau. Esau was able to embrace him as brother. Brother, I don't want to kill you. 
I don't want your gift. I don't even want what you got. You don't have to give me nothing. You don't have to sacrifice nothing to me. It's all right between me and you. Mm-hmm. Complete reconciliation. That's right. Everything right. Mm-hmm. Why? Because God had done it. Yeah. And like I said this morning, when God do stuff, you could always go to God and say, God, why you do this? So you see this going wrong or you see that going wrong. The church finances ain't all right. Mm. The membership doing foolishness. You could, you could always say to God, listen God, you did this. And it is your job to fix it. Mm. To fix it. See, God is powerful. God can be God by himself. He don't need you. No. No. He just gives you an opportunity to operate with him. That's right. I can close now. That's enough. You remember um, when the priests went to touch the ark? Remember what happened to the priests? They were struck dead. Not because they were being helpful and doing a good job and and, and, you know, they just human, they just saw it look like it was falling and they thought they'd steady it. In. They thought they'd prop it up. Like some of us, we think we gotta prop things up for God. God, God ain't got no sense. God don't know how to run things. Only this, this the creator of the universe. He ain't got no sense. He, don't, he need my help. God ain't got no hands but my hand. He has no feet but my feet. He has no mouth but my mouth. So I got to speak for him. I got to walk for him. I got to talk for him. I got to do stuff for God. God don't need your mouth. He don't need your hands. He don't need your feet. When the priest touched him, they died instantly. Because God was saying to them, listen, if this something I do it, if this something I handle it and I responsible for, you leave it alone. Take your hands off, take your mouth out. Take your desire, take everything you're thinking of, take it out. Do not touch it. Do not touch it. I will do it myself. When he talked about finding David, he said, I will find me a man. Mm. Not the people, I will. Mm. You got to wait and wrestle and wait on that I will of God. And when you get that, oh, you can shout that. Oh, you can sing it as well with my soul then. But you got to wait on God. Don't get ahead of him. Don't try to hurry God and don't push God. God will not be pushed. He will not be hurried. He will not be bamboozled. God is God. Let God be God. And let every man be a liar. Let every man sit small. And let God sit tall. Let God handle it. Let God deal with it. Let God carry the ark. Let God carry Bethel. Let God steady Bethel. Let him prop it up. It may seem falling, but don't worry about it. God is still in charge. It may seem weak, but don't worry about it. God is still your strength. It may seem hopeless, but don't worry about it. God is still your hope. It may seem aimless right now, but God is still your aim. And God is still your goal. God will be praised. He will be glorified. He will be lifted up in this place. God is the God who who sits high and he looks low and he orchestrates things. All on his own. And, and, and God doesn't worry about what he got to do and how he got to do it. He just does it. Because he is God. 
and you can depend on God. So let your will be done away with. And get to the point, Bethel. Thy will. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. And I'll be careful to then give you praise. I'll give you honor. I'll give you all the glory that's due your name. I'll be able to lift up mine eyes. And say thank you Lord. For whatever you've done. Thank you Lord. For whoever you send. Thank you Lord. For whoever you anoint. Whoever you appoint. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Because it's all about you. This is Bethel. The house of God. God bless you. prepare now just briefly to go before God in prayer and with our heads bowed and our eyes closed we take from this message today that which is uniquely for us we know collectively that we will take something with us today and we know that in our brokenness, in our personal struggles, in our desires, that up above our heads, there is a God somewhere. God, we thank you that you are the anchor in Bethel, the house of God. We thank you for this ancient, sacred place. We thank you for its storied leadership and we thank you for memories that frame that leadership anchored in your word. We know ultimately that people come and they leave the scene, but you endure from age to age. So help us, God, in our brokenness to seek you as we pursue wholeness to seek you because it is only you who can take our brokenness and make it whole again. God, speak to our troubled relationships, our marriages. Speak to our troubled conditions, our health in our bodies. Speak to our struggles. In worship, sometimes we don't speak to one another. Speak to our struggles. We are not neighborly to our neighbors. Speak to our struggles. There are more days than there is finances. Speak to our struggles, O oh God, and heal us. Mend us, restore us. Take the fragmented lives that we walk with and bring it together. Your word tells us that all things work together for good. But we must first love you and be the called of God. So help us, O oh God. In all of those aforementioned situations and struggles, to love you. Because loving you requires relationship. Relationship requires volition. It requires us having the will to be in relationship with you. And then, oh God, you will do the work for your honor and for your glory. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Bethel, let's give God thanks and praise for the word, for his messenger. Didn't our hearts burn within us and we heed the word of the Lord God. Reverend Grant, we thank you for your obedience to the Spirit of the Lord. 
your obedience to Bethel to be here this morning in double services to declare the word of the Lord God to this house and to our people who say yes to the Lord. And so we decree and declare that the Lord will continue to cover you with his divine favor, that the presence of the Lord God will go before you, be with you when you get up, when you lie down, as you go out, as you stand in the presence of his people, with your family, that he will protect them and keep them, that you will always, always be faithful, humble, true, and good unto the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Levette. It just remains for me to extend to our guest preacher, a son of Bethel, the Reverend Melvin Grant, our great thanks. It's not a small thing for a pastor to leave his pulpit for the entire Sunday morning, but he has spent this entire day with us. Isn't that great? We give God thanks. And we thank his lovely wife for her presence here. Give her to a round of applause. Reverend yeah. Grant has reminded us that we are in two hard places. He's given us two analogies. One, the stone this morning that Jacob used as a pillow and then wrestling through the night. But Reverend Grant, I'm happy to know that that pillow was transferred and transformed into a pillar so that rather than resting your head on a hard place, you use that same stone to hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. And so we are delighted and we are optimistic as we go forward because this battle, as the Reverend Grant has told us, is not ours. The battle belongs. The battle belongs. And we're going to let him fight the battle. We're going to walk behind because I want no blows thrown at me. Let the Lord take all the blows and we will follow. Isn't that right? So let's stand together as we close and we give thanks for your time together. Again, Lady Stuart, these must be difficult moments for you, but they're also times of celebration. So enjoy the mixture of both joy and sorrow. God bless you and God bless the family. We shall see the King, we'll sing just one verse and then we'll be on our way. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. Coming soon. It may be evening, morning, morning and noon. The wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the king. Bless you, keep you. May he cause his face to always shine upon you. May the radiant brilliance of that light sustain you, Bethel, keep you, Bethel, and uphold you with his right hand. For we all ask this in Jesus' name. And for his sake, amen and amen.
Bible Church Auxiliary Zoom meetings are held as follows. Bible study. We're in the book of Daniel every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Teen Talk Bahamas every Friday at 6 p.m. Facebook Live at Global 99.5, Radio at Global 99.5 FM. Prayer Meeting every Saturday at 7 a.m. Children's Church November 7th at 11.30 a.m. We invite you to join us and be blessed. Special prayers are offered for Deacon Sidney Starop at home, Sister Mary Butler at home, Sister Sally Hutchinson at home. My brother and sisters in Christ, God sees your tears and he hears your cries. Know that he is concerned about everything that concerns you. So hold on just a little while longer. Your breakthrough, your healing, your deliverance is on the way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Father, we present to the sick and shut-in of this nation. Healer divine, touch them in a miraculous way as you heal sick bodies and meet their needs. We remember in prayer members of Bethel including Deaconess Betty Bostrick, Sister Maria Winters, and Sister Joan Gordon. We lift you in prayer as we ask God to do a miraculous work in your body, mind, and spirit. We pray that you are healed and made whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Please join us in prayer for First Lady, Sister Sharon Stewart and family, and the entire family of Bethel every Wednesday as we pray for the peace of God and the spirit of love and unity to rest mightily upon us. We are asking each member to fast from 6 a.m. 1 p.m. if possible and to join the prayer session by Zoom at 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. as we unite in prayer. We look forward to your participation. The officers and members of Bethel extend sincere condolences to the following members. Sister Paula Delaney and Reverend Lovett McFall and family on the passing of Mother Cynthia Devalier, mother and aunt respectively. Brother James and Mother Newtland Simmons and family on the passing of Glenn Davis III, grandson and great-grandson respectively. Brother Arlington Miller and Sister Una Delancey and family on the passing of Leela Adderley, daughter and sister respectively. And finally, Sister Mary and Brother Don Knowles and family on the passing of Dorothea Clear, mother and grandmother respectively. May God grant you his peace and give you his strength as you go through this difficult time. Our prayers are with you. Our congratulations go to Carlton and Vanel Neely, who celebrates seven years of marital bliss, and Whitfield and Tonya Moss, celebrating 21 years. May your love for each other grow stronger with each passing day. Happy birthday blessings are extended to Plachetti McPhee, Elva Rowe, Rachel Rose, Kenneth Strong, Lethera Demerit, Danielle Knowles, Whitfield Moss Jr., Colomay Barr, Savian Brown, Taj Francis, Tonya Moss, Eronique Rowe, Kyla Wright, Cynthia Davis, Kenneth Ingram, Sarah Rowe, Nicole Williams, Nathan Fox, and Mother Sylvia Gibson. May God bless you all. Friends, the leadership of Bethel invites you to visit with us this Sunday at our 7.45 a.m. or 11 a.m. worship service. As God reveals himself to us through the teaching and preaching of his holy word. For more information, please call the church at 323-5000 or by email to Bethel Baptist 1790 at gmail.com.